Hi guys, it's Mandy from MomCraft Teach. Welcome back to my channel. I am here bringing a new video to you today that is my, actually my second crochet with me video. And today I am excited to sh do a tutorial on how to make this cute, gorgeous cold cup cozy. Here it is on a venti sized uh, reusable Starbucks cup actually. I have these, <laughs> shameless plug. I have um, these Central Perk with the cute little yellow frame cups on my Etsy shop. So that is linked down below, but that is not what I'm here to talk to you about. I'm here to talk to you about this gorgeous cozy that I have been using on my cold drinks this summer. I honestly love iced coffee all year round. So this is something that I personally will get use of. They help you with uh, when your cup sweats and that way you don't always have a napkin or a coaster that you have to move around with it. It actually has kept my drinks colder for longer as well because it's kind of like an insulator. And I am excited to show you how to make this. So let's dive right in. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you're notified of future videos. And stay tuned because we're about to get right into it. So I'm just gonna go over the materials that you'll need for this project. You're going to need a size H or five millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a pair of scissors to cut your yarn, a darning needle to sew in your ends at the end. I do like a smaller one with a quite sharp or pointy tip. I think it's just the best, especially for a cotton yarn and the tight stitches that we're doing here today. And then of course you're going to want to have some yarn. So for this project, I do recommend a 100% cotton yarn. For this particular piece, I used the Mainstays 100% cotton yarn from Walmart. This was about $3 at my local Walmart, came in a few colors, but I particularly thought that this um, pink, which is Daylily pink, was really pretty. It's kind of like a blush pink, um, a little bit more on the dusty side than a baby pink, which is, I feel like, a very popular color right now. Other yarns that you can use, I believe this one was a, I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby. I, I think this is I love this cotton. I don't remember because it didn't have the tag on it. Um, I know I did use I love this cotton for some other ones that I tested. Like this one isn't the exact pattern, but this was definitely, I love this cotton. I tried to use a worsted weight yarn. It was a little too thick. So you can tell that this one is a little bit bigger. Um, but for today's project, I'm actually going to be using the Sugar Wheel Cotton Sparkle. I've never used it before. It's only a 97% cotton yarn, but that 3% is because of that metallic thread that's in there. I think that the majority of the yarn is cotton, so it'll definitely uh, work well to absorb the moisture um, condensation on your cup. This goes for $5.99 at Hobby Lobby. When the yarn's on sale, it's usually 30% off. If it's not on sale, you get an even better deal and use that 40% coupon that you can. So let's go ahead and dig into our tutorial and I will show you how to make this gorgeous cold cup cozy. Okay, so I am making this tutorial with the assumption that you know the basics of crochet, which is usually um, the basic chain stitch, single crochet, I'll also be using a half double crochet, and the double crochet stitches in this tutorial. Um, some other stitches you might not know, a pattern stitch that I'll be doing is the shell stitch, as well as um, crocheting, half double crocheting, sorry, in the third loop. So if you don't know what that is, um, that's why you're here and I will show you how that goes. So first of all, the first row of this pattern is going to be making six single crochets in a magic ring. Now, if you don't know how to make a magic ring, there's many tutorials on YouTube of how to do it. Um, I'm just gonna show you quickly what I do. Um, I actually do it a little bit differently than some people. I loop around my finger twice so you can see there are two um, loops on my fingers. I slip 
my crochet hook under and then I'm gonna go ahead and chain one to kind of complete the magic ring. Now I do this double loop magic ring because I feel like it's more secure than a regular magic ring where you just go once. Sometimes I have issues with that middle separating, but I'll show you why it's more secure. So we're gonna go ahead and do six single crochets inside this magic ring. So to single crochet, put your hook in the loop, yarn over and pull through then yarn over and pull through both loops. That's a single crochet. So we're gonna repeat this around six times. Again, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, you have two. Repeating that, we have three. Repeating that, we have four, five, and six. Whoops. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and close off this magic loop. So what I like to do is I kind of pull on the string to see which one will start to close it. Now, because I know that this is starting to pull on this tail here, I know that this is directly attached to the tail, which is what I want to pull last. So what I like to do first is untangle this tail <laughs> okay now I'm gonna pull the other string first that's not attached to the long end and that's gonna go ahead and close up that ring okay so now we have this long loop here now we're gonna pull the tail and that should Come through and now since there's two um, loops inside this middle circle it's definitely not going to come loose which is the issues I used to have before so now that we have our first circle what we want to do is our, our first stitches sorry it was we're going to want to join this last stitch to the beginning so we're gonna count backwards one two three four five six it's so small but it does get easier once you start going around. So your first step is to insert your hook in that first little stitch. Sometimes I like to kind of start it here by just opening it up with my hook. So let me just make sure I have six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It always gets lost in there, this like tiny little one in the front. Okay, so make sure we're on our working yarn here. So we're gonna go ahead, go into that very first stitch, e. <laughs> and let me pull some more yarn out here. We're gonna slip stitch, which means all you do is once your hook is in there, you pull through the stitch, a little tight in the beginning here. So take your time, oops, okay. Then we pull through again. So that's a slip stitch and it create, completes our circle. We chain one and now we're gonna increase in every stitch around. That means we're going to do two single crochets in each stitch, which will give us 12. What I like to do with this end is I like to keep it next to my work. It's up to you, you can leave it and sew it in later, but I like to work it in. So go back into that first stitch that you slip stitched in you're gonna catch that tail in there if you want to weave in your end as you go. We yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, you have one single crochet. Now go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. Okay, so we have two stitches here. Going on to the next single crochet, we're going to insert your hook, Pull up one, pull through two, single crochet, right in that next space, another single crochet. So you're going to do those two single crochets in each stitch around, so there's six stitches total around, and then you're going to 
go ahead and slip stitch into that first stitch. So I'm gonna complete that and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have all 12 stitches done and we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So here is the 12th stitch. I want to go ahead and slip stitch into that, which means I'm just inserting my hook in. I pull this over so I catch my tail in there to work it in. And go ahead and slip stitch. And for row three, we chain one to begin. So now we're going to increase again, and we're increasing by three. So that means we are doing two single crochets in the first stitch. One, two, going on to the next stitch, one single crochet. So now we have three single crochets so far in this row. We're going to repeat that by increasing a stitch here. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. That's two stitches in there, two single crochets, I mean, and then insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. So we have six stitches now. So we're basically increasing it by a multiple of three, which will give us 18 stitches at the end of this row. So go ahead and repeat two single crochets in the next stitch, then one single crochet, two single crochets, then one single crochet, all the way around, and I'll meet you back. You should have 18 stitches at the end of this row. Okay, we made it to the end of the row. I am now going to slip stitch again to the very first single crochet we made. Putting my tail in there to catch it. And to start row four, we are chaining one. Now we're going to increase by a multiple of four, which means we start off in the same space we slip stitched by crocheting two single crochets into the first stitch. Now one single crochet in the next two. One, two. So now we have four stitches. Again, we're gonna do two single crochets in the next stitch. Oops. One, two. And then we're going to do one single crochet in the next two. So we're basically increasing by a multiple of four. So we're gonna continue that pattern, two single crochets in the next stitch, one cr single crochet in the next two all the way around and by the end we should have 24 total stitches and I will meet you back here again once we're done. Okay, I have gotten back to the beginning of my row. I just wanted to also point out to you guys that if you are having trouble remembering which stitch you started with, it's a good opportunity to use a stitch marker. Um, a stitch marker can be either a loose piece of yarn, an actual, a uh, stitch marker, oftentimes it just looks like a lobster clasp that you would have for like a an earring. Um, you can even just use a bobby pin. And what I like to do is I like to, uh, I'll show you here. So this is round five. So we're gonna be um, increasing by a multiple of five. So we're gonna go ahead and insert our hook in the first stitch. See, this is actually a good time for me to do this. So once you have like a lot of stitches on here, it's a good idea to use a stitch marker. So let me just count back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, two, 23, 24. Okay, so this stitch here is our first. So we're gonna go ahead to close out round four we slip stitch to start round five, we chain one. So to increase again, we do two single crochets in that first stitch. Now here is where I would place my marker. So I know that this stitch here was my first in the row. So for using a bobby pin, 
This one's not really a good one because the metal, the little rubber part came off. I'm actually just going to pull another one out of my hair. <laughs> so um, the first stitch again, I just insert the bobby pin like that so that it is in the first one. And so now we know where we started. So we have two stitches so far. Now we want to work one single crochet in the next three. One, two, three. Now we're going to increase again, which means two single crochets in the next stitch. One, two, then we're going to do three single crochets in a row for the next three stitches. One, two, and three. So we have 10 here. So we're going to keep doing that two single crochets in the next stitch and then one, two, three single crochets, two single crochets in the next six, one, two, three. Multiples of five. So once we get all the way around, by the time we get to our last stitch, we should have 30. So do that, meet me back here. Okay, I've made it all the way around and have 30 total stitches from this first one with the marker all the way to the last. I can take out my marker and I know exactly where that first stitch was. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook to slip stitch and chain one to start round six. So now we are actually starting the main body part of our cozy. So what I liked to do with this is create this ridge around there. So it kind of just makes sure that my, when it's on the cup, it knows to sit flat on this edge here. So to do that, we are going to do one single crochet all around in each stitch, but we're only going to work in our back loop. So we want to do that by working in the back loop of the first stitch that we slip stitched in. Now again, sometimes I like to just take my hook, stretch that loop out a little bit so I can see it a little better. You insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, then pull through two to create a single crochet. We're gonna do that again. We can see here, bring you a little closer to the camera, that this is your stitch here. Normally you would work in both of these loops. We're working in the back loop only to create that little ridge. So we skip putting it into this loop and we only put it into the back loop. Okay, yarn over, pull through one and pull through two. Three stitches here, back stitch, Again, back loop, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. So we're gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my first stitch again so I know where I should stop. We're gonna go all the way around working one single crochet in the back loop of each stitch for a total of 30 stitches and I will meet you back here. Okay, so we have worked the 30 single crochets around in the back loop of round five. So we just completed round six, almost. By completing it, we want to, again, insert your hook, slip stitch, and now we are doing round seven, which means we want to chain two to begin round seven. Now for round seven, we are going to work one half double crochet in each stitch around. So we're gonna have 30 total half double crochets in round seven. So to do a half double crochet, we yarn over first, insert our hook, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook and then pull through all three. That is one half double crochet. So gonna go ahead and place my marker here so I know that is my first one. Again, a half double crochet is yarn over first, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, then pull through three. Again, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up one, yarn over, pull through three. 
So continue one half double crochet in each stitch around for 30 half double crochets total. Okay, so I've come to the end of round seven and I have 30 half double crochets all the way around. Again, I'm going to slip stitch in the first half double crochet I created and I'm ready to start round eight in which I will chain two to begin. Now here is where we are going to be working in the third loop, which is on the back of your work. So right now when you are working it, it does tend to curl up towards you, but this is actually the right side. So when you actually use this, it's going to curl back and this is the inside of your cozy, which is exactly where that third loop is. So I'll bring you a little closer here. So we can see we just slip stitched into this stitch right here. So when you crochet, you normally work in this V chain to uh, make any type of stitch, like a single crochet, whatever. But the third loop is what is going to give us this look of the chain being on the outside of our work. So let's look here. We're going to flip our work so we can see the inside here. Now here, you can see kind of a V and we're going to insert our hook right here. This is the third loop. So we're going to half double crochet in the third loop. So to half double crochet, again, yarn over first, insert your hook into this third loop here, okay? Pull through, you should have three loops on your hook. Pull through all three. Again, yarn over, insert your look loop into the third chain, or third loop, I'm sorry. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through, pull through three. Do it one more time, yarn over, Insert into the one, two, third loop. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through three. Third loop, pull through three. Okay, so you can already see the, that your first row of chains that are worked on the outside are already um, showing. So we're gonna go ahead and continue working one half double crochet around um, in the third loop for a total of 30 stitches again. And I'll meet you here at the end of this row. Okay, I have made it to the end of round eight, which was doing one half double crochet in the third loop of every stitch around. So we should have three, three, we should have 30, half double crochets that were worked in the third loop. Again, my work tends to curl towards me, but this is our right side. We can already see we did one row where the chain was exposed like that because we worked into the third loop, so it created a ridge. We're gonna go into our very first half double crochet, the regular part, not the third loop, just our regular chain slip stitch to complete the row. We're gonna go ahead and chain two again. Now for the next two rows, we're going to continue what we did by working one half double crochet in each of the third loops around. So we're just gonna keep working in that third loop around for rows nine and 10 which is going to create this nice three rows. Let me flatten this out here, the front three rows of chains for our cozy. So go ahead and complete those two rows and I will meet you back here to show you the next step. All right, we have finished through round 10, which means that our cozy should have three ridges and should be already starting to take shape. So as I go, I actually like to take my reusable cup 
if you have one or even keep one that you've recently used. No, you, no shame in um, using it as a prop and just kind of uh, measuring and seeing how things fit as I go. So we can see that we are at a good start here. Our three ridges should be right around the bottom of the cup. Again, this does stretch a little as you use it. So if it seems like a tight fit at first, that's okay. Um, as we use it, it will stretch out. Um, and at the top, we do increase a little bit. So it does make the cup a little bit easier to get on there. So um, I actually forgot here just to show you here as usual, at the very end of the row, slip stitch into the first chain that we made in row 10. And we're gonna start row 11 by chaining one. Now here we are starting our shell stitch pattern around. So we will still continue having a total of 30 stitches in each row, but we are gonna make those stitches by skipping some of these ones that we already made. So first stitch in the same one, in the same stitch that we slip stitched in, we are going to go ahead and do one single crochet. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches and we are going to work five double crochets to create our first shell in that stitch. So to create a double crochet, we yarn over again, skip two stitches, work in the third, pull through. You should have three on your hook, pull through two, pull through two again, and you have one double crochet stitch. Again, yarn over to start, insert your hook, pull through, three loops on your hook, pull through two, pull through two, that's two. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two loops, pull through two loops, that's three. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull through two, pull through two, that's four. And the last one, we repeat again, is five. Now that we have those done, we can kind of see there's like a little fan pattern here. That's our first shell. We're gonna go ahead and skip the next two stitches and then work another single crochet into that stitch. Now I'm just pulling there. So you can see we have our first shell stitch. So we're gonna continue this pattern where we do one single crochet, skip two, work five double crochets, into the next one, two, three, four, five, skip two, and then single crochet in the next one. So we're gonna continue that pattern of single crochet, skip two, five double crochets, skip two, single crochet, and so on until you get to the end of the row and I will meet you back. Okay, so I've come to the end of round 11 and we can see I worked my last five double crochets. I still have two stitches here, which I will skip. And I'm gonna go ahead and close out this row by slip stitching into the first double crochet I made. Now to start round 12, we're going to go ahead and chain three. And then we're gonna work three double crochets, which are the same that we made here with the shell, into that same place where we slip stitched. So one, two, three. Basically half of a shell is made we're gonna go ahead and skip two stitches again. Now this time we're gonna work our single crochet at the top of our shell. Okay, skip two. Now we're gonna go and complete the same pattern we did before where we work five double crochets into our single crochet stitch. Three, four, five and then skip two and work one single crochet in the top of our shell. So that's basically the second row of our shell stitch pattern. So I will meet you at the end of this row 
and let you know what we do next. Okay, so I am coming up to the end of round 12 where I have done my single crochet at the top of my shell. I'm going to go ahead and skip those two last double crochets in my shell and I'm going to work two double crochets into that very first place which is the very first stitch of the row where I already worked three shells. So basically I already worked half of them, the three shells in the beginning, but now I'm gonna work the other two. So go ahead, yarn over, insert your hook into that single crochet. And we're gonna do two double crochets there. Okay, I know it looks a little bit um, confusing, but then what we're going to do to close out row 12 is to slip stitch at the top of our shell, which is the very first double crochet we made. And we are going to start row 13 by chaining one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue this shell pattern another two times. So you're going to work row 11 and 12 just as you did before for rows 13, 14, 15, and 16. So we can see here on our completed project that we have a row of shells here and here, which is row 11 and 12, a row of shells here and here, which is 13 and 14, 15 and 16. So it creates a nice chunk of shell stitches for six total rows. So go ahead and complete that and I will meet you back here when we're done. I will join row 16 with you to close it out and then I'll show you how to do 17. All right, so we have made it to the end of round 16. So I just finished my last two double crochets in that first um, in that first single crochet from the previous row. So now we're gonna close out this row by doing a slip stitch in that very first double crochet. And we're gonna chain one to start row 17. So row 17 is basically a row that allows us to straighten out the top here. So if you can see with the shell, it's made our thing, our thing, our cozy wavy. And so we want to kind of create stitches to flatten this out. So what we're going to do is we are going to do one single crochet in the same chain where we sorry, in the same stitch where we slip stitched. And now we are going to go in the next one and we are going to do another single crochet. So we have two single crochets. And now what we're going to do is we are going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch a double crochet in the next stitch and then a half double crochet. So basically what we're doing is we're using a varied height of stitches in order to kind of fill that wavy gap. So as you're going down, you want your stitches to get progressively longer and when you're going back up, you want your stitches to get progressively shorter. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like going like this in front of myself and you guys can't see. So as you're going down, you want your stitches to, to be shorter, longer, and then shorter again. So the shorter stitches are those two half double crochets. We get a little longer with, sorry, two single crochets. We get a little longer with a half double crochet, longer with a double crochet. Now we're working back up with the half double crochet. Now this is where we kind of start a pattern repeat. So the way that the repeat goes is three single crochets, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. So I'm gonna show you that. Three single crochets, insert your, we'll start over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, do that three times. Now half double crochet, 
yarn over first, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through all three, double crochet, yarn over first, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, one half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three. So that is your repeat that you are going to continue to do all the way around until you get to the end and you will have 30 stitches still. So one, two, three single crochets, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way around and you can already see, if I press this down here, that we have already started to even out our shell stitch edge, whereas you can see here, it's still wavy. So I'm gonna continue on, get to the end, and then I will show you how to move on to round 18. Okay, so I am finishing up round 17, going into the last Let's see, where am I? One, two, three. So I just finished the last half double crochet and now we already did one, two single crochets as our first stitch. But if you remember the pattern goes three single crochets, half, double, half. So we have to make up for that one last single crochet in that last double crochet stitch that we have left. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch to the very first single crochet and chain one to begin row 18. Now row 18 is an increasing round just like we did at the bottom here to make the circle. So we want to increase the number of stitches in this row to 36, which means we are going to increase in a multiple of six. We'll start off by single crochet twice. So two single crochet in the first stitch and then the next four stitches, single crochet. One, two, three, four. Again, that increase is two single crochet, and then four in the next four. Two, three, four. So, as you can see, when I do two and then four, it's six total, and we do that around six times. So that will make for a total of 36 stitches once you complete this round. So again, continue increasing around two single crochet and then four, and I will meet you back here to work on row 19. Okay, I am closing out row 18 by inserting my hook in the first stitch to do a slip stitch and join. And we are going to chain two to start row 19. So basically what we've done is we have increased the number of stitches to 36 stitches around, which allows this to be a little wider as we get um, as we make our cozy taller so what that also allows us to do is since we have a smaller bottom if this part is a little wider it does make it a little bit easier to put our cup in here again this does stretch out as we use it right now this is also why I recommend um, trying it on your cup as you go because it does kind of just help to work the cozy into the size that it'll be used for and stretch out those stitches so you can see the beautiful shell pattern so just kind of showing you where we are so far so we've finished our first three rows of the half double crochet down here. We've done our six rows of shell pattern as well as evening out the edge here. And now what we're gonna do is create those three um, exposed chain rows where we worked in the back loop up here.
So you're basically going to do what you did, except for now we're just doing it for 36 stitches rather than the 30 that we did in the beginning. So we've already chained two and we're gonna go ahead and half double crochet for 36 stitches around. So again, half double crochet is where you yarn over first and pull through your yarn and then you just pull through all three loops that were on your hook. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all 36 of these and meet you back here and just remind you of how we work in the third loop for the next few rows. Okay, so we have finished up our row of all half double crochets here. I believe that's row 19 and we are going to go ahead and slip stitch to join in that first half double crochet. Now for the next three rows we are going to go ahead and start by chaining two. Looking back here we can see our V stitch so we always have our third loop which is, I'll bring you closer, one, two, and that's the third loop back here. So one, two, I'm gonna half double crochet in the third loop around for 36 stitches, four rows 20, 21, and 22, which will create that beautiful chain that is exposed on the outside of our cozy. So do that for three rows, 20, 21, and 22. I'll meet you back here. And we just have row 23 and 24 until we finish our cozy. Okay, so we've made it to the end of round 22 and we can see that we have our three rows with the chains on the outside because we've um, stitched in the third loop when half double crocheting. We do have a seam that goes up the back. It doesn't bother me because I just know that's the nature of crochet when you're joining rows like this. Um, there are definitely different techniques on how to keep the line straight, but just the way that it's worked with crochet, it does tend to slant. I know that there's techniques where you can make a last stitch longer and stuff just so that things kind of even out either way but it doesn't bother me because ultimately when you have this on there you won't see the seam um I don't know if it bothers you it doesn't bother me so as you can see since the uh since we increased the stitches here in the row prior you know after the shell we have more room to put our tumbler in and obviously I wouldn't do this sideways normally when you have a real drink but you can see that it fits right on there you can get your cup snug in there when you actually have your drink what I usually suggest is you know putting your drink here and kind of holding it like this and pulling it. If you can see, I'm just gonna do, hold it sideways so you can see when pulling it up like this. Um, again, it does stretch as you use it, so don't worry if it's a snug fit, but let's move on to the last two rows, 23 and 24. So closing out row 22, slip stitch into your first half double crochet We are going to do one chain one and then we're going to single crochet in that same join and then we're going to go all the way around one single crochet in every stitch which will be a total of 36 stitches once you get to the end and I will meet you back here once we are done. Okay, end of round 23, go ahead and slip stitch in that first single crochet. 
Now here I'm going to chain one again. Now what I like to do is I am not going to work a stitch in this very first join like I usually do. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the second stitch and I'm going to slip stitch all the way around. But you wanna do this relatively loose because a slip stitch is not like other crochet stitches where they give, they kind they they just don't give as much. They're not as elastic. But I like to do this so that as you use the cozy, it's going to stretch out a little bit, but this slip stitch border on the top prevents it from just becoming completely stretched out and not able to stay on your tumbler. So Again, we're gonna go into the second single crochet slip stitch. Again, slip stitch is where you just insert your hook and you pull through and then pull through again. You're not yarning over anywhere. So you're gonna go ahead and slip stitch all the way around. Sometimes you want to go ahead and mark where your first slip stitch was so you don't just keep going around. Um, it should be a count of 35 slip stitches since we skipped that first stitch. So we'll meet back here and I'll finish this off with you. So I thought I would just show you for the last six stitches of this slip stitch border, just how I do it so that it's not too tight is when I insert it, I kind of like pull up a little bit so that these are even and then pull through. It just kind of gives you a little bit of slack and give when you are slip stitching. And again, just so that it's not too tight when you're trying to get your cup in there since the top you know, is wider. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take out my stitch marker here and I am going to just fasten off right here. I'm not gonna join because I'm gonna do that when I sew in my end. So go ahead, what I do is I like to pull a large loop and then cut here and then pull that loose end in and pull tight to finish. Now, if you're worried that you did your slip stitch too tight, before you bind off, you want to just, again, try this on. It's a little fiddly sometimes because the yarn is a little slippery. I feel like it's actually easier to do when you have a drink already because it's, it doesn't like tend to slip off since the cup already has condensation on it. So again, I like to just kind of hold my cup. It'll be up like this, but kind of go from the bottom and then pull this top part up. So right now it is a tight fit, but as the condensation and moisture get into it, it does give your yarn a little bit more stretch. And you know you can pull it up as high as you want. You don't have to pull it up as high. Obviously with this one, um, I didn't, they're about the same, I guess. I pulled this one up a little bit higher, but this actually was a little bit of a finer yarn, so that's why it looks a little bit different here. If I go ahead and pull this, you know, I can get that same look. It's just a little, it'll make the design look a little bit taller. Either way, it has that really pretty shell stitch pattern. You know, they're about the same here. So we wanna go ahead and take that off again now that we've tried it on. I like to just flatten it out, take a look at it, make sure it looks good. Here's our other completed one. If you use a regular yarn that doesn't have all of that poly in it, it's going to turn out just a little bit bigger. It doesn't affect the fit of the cup because again, it does stretch as you use it. But if you just use a regular yarn like this, you can take our measurement, your completed project across at the widest part should be about four and a half inches to about six and a half inches tall. 
give or take. Again, it stretches, so there's room for, you know, you don't have to follow a specific gauge. It's good to try it on your cup as you go, just to make sure that your tension, the way that you crochet, um, you know, is a good fit for the cozy. I don't have a specific gauge on this. Again, I just think that it should be fine if, you, if it fits. It doesn't have to come all the way to the top of the cup. In fact, you know, the venti or 24 ounce cup from Starbucks is different from the 24 ounce cup from Dunkin' Donuts, but the part that counts where you're holding it and the bottom is what needs to be covered. So let's go ahead and take our darning needle and we're gonna go ahead and sew our end in. So just thread your needle here what I like to do is take a look at where that um, first slip stitch that I did was. And I like to insert my thread. Whoops, I think I went too far. Actually, it's the one before where I slip stitch. So I like to insert my thread here. And then we are going to come back around like this and then go back in there again. You don't wanna to pull too tight. I don't pull too tight anyways, because again, I don't want to make this any smaller than it already is. And once you do that, what I like to do is I just come through any loop back here, pull through and I'm gonna make a knot. So once I get my tail end through here, whoops, can't figure out where my camera is. Once I get my tail end through here, let me start that over just so you guys can see what I was doing since apparently I was off camera. Let me just thread this again. I'm just creating a knot on the back so that this yarn stays in place. So again, just going through the top like basically back here. And then once that tail is through, I loop this through so I'm creating a knot. And then I pull that tight. It will pull that through a little bit, okay? And then we wanna just weave this end in. And my rule is to kind of go through three times. The previous row is the single crochet. So you can kind of see that there's already some vertical bars that you can go under and that's what I like to do. I just like to go across maybe one, like maybe three or four stitches across. Basically you're just hiding your yarn inside that row of single crochets. So you go through once this way. I usually skip this bar and then I go back through where I was again and then I like to go back one more time just to make sure so I skip the first one I went through and then I just go all the way back across again so you're just weaving in your end and you're going through a few times uh, I've also heard you know just going in at least three different directions um, you know, we'll make sure that your yarn isn't going to slip through or um, or anything to unravel. You made that knot anyway, so it won't, won't be a problem. So you can see if you pull on it a little bit, that little end will hide, but it doesn't matter. It's on the inside of your work. So we have our finished cozy. And I'm going to go ahead and slip it in the cup again. Again, tight fit right now will loosen up as you use it so there we go I actually personally oh because it's caught I was like maybe I could have slip stitch a little loose but no it was just rolled under that's why it wasn't moving <laughs> so just there we go. got stuck a little bit on my vinyl all right. Again. 
I'm gonna take this off. So see, if you see like here, it stretches a lot, but once you get to the top, it doesn't stretch anymore. So when I did that last loop here and it pulled it a little bit tighter, it did make it a little bit on the tight side, but it's fine. Push that up. All right, there we go. So there you have it. We have our beautiful finished cold drink cozy, which will fit a 24 ounce cup. If you enjoyed watching this tutorial, please do give this video a big thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment on what you think of this pattern. If you have any suggestions on what I can do next time, again, this is my very first pattern that I've created myself besides like that little crochet bow that I did last time. Um, but this is like, the, you know, a more involved pattern and my first more involved tutorial. So obviously some bumps and hiccups that I know for next time, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. If you want to learn how to do this and have a printable pattern, I am going to list the pattern on Ravelry as well as my Etsy shop. Or you can get the free pattern on my blog, which I will link below as well. It is omandy.wordpress.com. I will catch you in the next video and thanks again for watching. Bye.